Before I begin this reading, there is a uh, caution to be given here. Uh, SCP-1127 may contain sexual content described in, in the article, and it may not be safe for some viewers, and also it may not be safe for work either, so just letting you know before I start. Item number SCP-1127 Object Class Safe Special Containment Procedures Instances of SCP-1127 identified outside of containment are to be investigated by Mobile Task Force Move-53, Ebert's Thumb. Physical copies of SCP-1127 are to be seized, and digital copies are to be captured on secure encrypted recording media before being neutralized. Any victims of full SCP-1127 exposure must be evaluated to determine if the effects of SCP-1127 have rendered them an unacceptable threat to the general public. Those deemed an acceptable risk are to be treated with Class A amnesiacs and released. Note, amnesiacs have no effect on the symptoms of SCP-1127 exposure. Those that cannot be released back into the population will be reclassed as D-Class personnel or terminated at the site director's discretion. Contained copies of SCP-1127 are being kept in a secure media vault at site. Instances of SCP-1127 shall only be viewed on devices approved by the site director within site. Secure viewing room. Instances of SCP-1127 shall only be viewed in their entirety by D-Class subjects as part of an approved experiment. Foundation personnel should avoid unnecessary exposure and log any instance of viewing SCP-1127. Any personnel who have logged over 15 minutes cumulative lifetime viewing of any version of SCP-1127 must cease working with SCP-1127 and be assigned to other duties. Description: SCP-1127 is a series of short films ranging between 23 and 42 minutes in length. To date, copies of three different films have been recovered and one film has been identified but not yet contained. The films have been designated SCP-1127-1, Dash 2, Dash 3, and Dash 4. It is unknown how many more films in the SCP-1127 series have yet to be identified and recovered by the Foundation. Each film is composed primarily of scenes clipped from other movies and shorts with additional video from various other sources. Sound and dialogue have been added or modified and a narrator character unique to each film appears, fully integrated into the clips comprising the film, regardless of the original source of the material. The narrator provides commentary and occasionally interacts with objects and characters within the recycled footage. Anomalous properties present after a comb of 20 minutes of exposure to the contents of any single film in the SCP-1127 series. Effects do not present when audio and video are perceived separately. Each film in the series produces a different effect on the viewer. But in each case, the effect is a permanent disruption of normal behavior patterns, altering emotional reactions to various stimuli. Description of SCP-1127-1 Initial Appearance SCP-1127-1 first appeared on at the Movies 10 Cineplex in New York. SCP-1127-1 had been inserted into the first hour half of Exits were blocked by persons unknown and approximately People were exposed. Length, 23 minutes. Title, Were Clowns Always Yellow? Number 5. Narrator, a middle-aged man wearing an SS uniform including a holstered pistol. His face is obscured by elaborate clown makeup. Identified video sources. The Sound of Music, 1965. The Night Porter, 1974. The Day the Clown Cried, 1972. Surf Nazis Must Die, 1987. Archival footage from the World War II era. Sample narration. When our lives become the joke, humor becomes a war crime. The punchline is always death, and to get it is to abandon the pretense that getting it matters. Laugh at the reality that is laughing at you. Narrator draws his pistol and shoots in the back of the head. Effects from exposure. After exposure to SCP-1127-1, subjects were generally considered to be the most humorous thing they ever seen. Afterwards, subject will express disturbance and disgust at any communication normally intended to be humorous. Most jokes will be seen as offensive, and videos of comedians and comedies will cause distress or revulsion. One D-Class subject had to be physically restrained when shown an episode of Monty Python's Flying Circus after exposure. Conversely, communications that might normally be cause of distress prior to exposure 
Autopsy photos, graphic war footage, videos of public suicide will be seen as amusing or funny. Conclusions. Victims of SCP-1127-1 exposure are deemed safe to re-enter the general population after administration of Class A amnesiacs. Description of SCP-1127-2 Initial appearance on A copy of SCP-1127-2 was uploaded to dot com and registered views before exposure was contained with a DMCA notice. Foundation agents track the origin to a proxy server in Guam. Investigation continues as to its origin. Length 37 minutes. Title Crazy Where You Are Number Zero. Narrator A female child approximately 12 years old wearing a blue dress and a black domino mask. She carries a teddy bear that she slowly dismembers with a small knife during the course of the film. Identified video sources Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory, 1971, A Three Stooges Short, They Stooge to Conga, 1943, Faces of Death, 1978, La Planète Sauvage, 1973, Various animated sources from 1930 until 19 including Bugs Bunny Nips to Nips, 1944, and the Tom Jerry Short, The Midnight Snack, 1941. Sample narration Whispering during a clip of Bugs Bunny nips the nips. What are you afraid of? Violence? Afraid that violence is the answer? Or is it the question? Ask the question you are afraid of. You already know the answer. Pain doesn't hurt. Effects from viewing. After exposure, subjects will generally express no strong emotional response to SCP-1127-2 at all. Subjects also lose interest in emotional connections to things, activities, and people they had prior to exposure. Subjects will also react to dangerous and hostile environments with disinterest to the point that they will ignore immediate threats to their personal safety. Subjects also express a marked decrease in empathy and may injure or harm others out of curiosity. Conclusions. Victims of SCP-1127-2 exposure are unsafe to re-enter the general population due to the risk they pose to others. Description of SCP-1127-3 Initial appearance During an illegal UHF transmitter off the coast of Michigan broadcast a loop of SCP-1127-3 for approximately 72 hours. Foundation involvement occurred subsequent to cessation of broadcast. People were found to be affected. No copy of SCP-1127-3 has yet been recovered. Length: 30 minutes, approximate. Title: All comes with yesterday. Number X. Narrator. A woman approximately in her mid-thirties wearing an Elizabethan ball gown. She wears a metallic golden mask in the form of a rat's face. When she is in profile, the mask appears to be stitched to the side of her head. Some blood is visible. Identified Video Sources Robocop 1987 Eraserhead 1977 The Ten Commandments 1956 Natural Born Killers 1994 Dawn of the Dead 1978 and Apocalypse Now 1979 Sample narration. Monotone. Three second beat between words. Desire. Aspire. Require. Conspire. Acquire. Retire. Expire. Choir. Pyre. Liar. 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 Continue saying liar for several minutes. Effects from viewing. After exposure, subjects express an extreme discomfort with technological artifacts. They dislike any object that has been machined, processed, or otherwise manufactured. This applies not only to things generally considered technological, but to almost anything that has a result of human intervention in the environment, including clothing and anything beyond the most simple tool use. This effect extends to abstract concepts as well, in particular to concepts of money, personal property, and political organization. Conclusions. Victims of SCP-1127-3 exposure pose little danger, but are unable to reintegrate into modern society. After administration of Class A amnesiacs, any individuals to be released must be placed in an institutional environment or be relocated to where they can be assimilated into the population. Initial appearance from to copies of SCP-1127-4 have been inserted as a special feature on the DVD stocked at the adult bookstore in Canada. Length: 42 minutes. Title: Why are you crying? Number negative one. Narrator: Mel in his early 20s, shirtless, wearing black leather pants and a leather mask obscuring his face. As the film progresses, welts and bruises appear on the narrator's torso without apparent cause. Identified video sources: Cremaster 3, 2002, Dog, 
1971, A Dirty Shame 2004, Lolita 1962, The Rocky Horror Picture Show 1975, Salo Ole 120, Garonet D. Sodoma 1975. Various videos available on the internet including Sample narration Do you want to close your eyes and run to mommy? Well, run to her then. Run to her and tell her all those sick things that make you want to puke and whip it out and jerk off while the warm shit smears across your naked skin, and she'll kiss it and make it all better because mommy knows what you want, what you always wanted, and she'll give it to you hard if only you had the balls to ask because mommy loves you and love ain't nothing but sex misspelled. Effect from viewing after exposure, subjects will no longer be able to attain sexual arousal as they would prior to exposure. Anything they would have found erotic or stimulating prior to exposure will become, at best, an object of disinterest and occasionally it will become a source of revulsion. Instead, the subject will have acquired new and apparently random subjects and or actions they consider erotic and or stimulating. All subjects lose the ability to be stimulated by fantasizing or use of pornography and must actively engage in their acquired fixations in order to become aroused. New sexual interests may be relatively benign, such as sadomasochism, coprophagia, acrotomophilia, partialism, clismophilia, mesophilia, voyeurism, exhibitionism, potentially harmful or criminal, asphyxiophilia zoosadism, or actively dangerous and likely to cause harm to the subject or others, biastophilia, pedophilia, necrophilia, opononophilia, and forerophilia. Conclusions Dispositions of victims of SCP-1127-4 is dependent on the valuation of their acquired paraphilia. Because of the necessity of the subject to act on these desires to achieve any form of sexual function, any subject expressing a paraphilia that requires a non-consensual partner or a partner that cannot legally consent and or risk actual permanent physical harm or death of the subject and or partner shall be deemed unsuitable for release.